Hey guys, it's been raining so much this past week and then non-stop today. And this whole bottoms down here is totally flooded. I wonder what Jerome's bill is doing up here. I, I wonder if they can't get through. That road back there, that's kind of our main road, and they have it all blocked off. It was totally flooded across, and there was actually a car down in the water, but I think, we think everybody was okay. And then this is our side road here. I just talked to mom, and she said so far everything's okay out at the greenhouse. But two of my main ways to get out there are closed, so hopefully this stops soon because I got a lot to do tomorrow. Well, we made it. Luckily, it stopped raining last night right at dark, and then the main road was open. Side road was still closed, though. Do you hear the creek? Let's go look. Okay. Whoa. We got three inches of rain over 18 hours yesterday. Mom said the cow pasture over there was a bit flooded. And then it looks like it came through here. There's the river right there. And then there's the back of the greenhouse. So that was a pretty good test. Luckily it was okay, but I know mom and dad didn't get much sleep last night. The main thing I gotta do today is lean and lower these tomatoes. And usually dad does this, but they're out and about today, so I told him I'd get it done. But when they start um, bending over like this a little bit, if I don't get a clip on there, they'll snap. And we want to keep these going for a long time throughout the whole season. So definitely need to do that today. We'll head out to the high tunnel later because I want to get these super hot peppers out there. These are the Carolina Reapers and the Habaneros. And then we have something different that we need to get planted. This is another section of lettuce for the farm market. It's looking pretty happy. And then this is that basil and kale that I planted a couple weeks ago. So the purpose for leaning and lowering is to bring the top of the tomato down so that way it can have more room to keep growing up and keep producing more tomatoes. And we do this kind of step by step. So the first thing I have to do is take off some of the bottom leaves and harvest all of the ripe tomatoes. I've shown harvesting a couple times now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this done really quick but our produce buyer is still really happy to get our fresh tomatoes. And we're just really fortunate that we have the um, gas well on the property so we can start these early, have it heated in here and get a really early crop of tomatoes. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the lower pruning done. And these Rebelskis just love to shoot off suckers. They'll shoot them off down at the bottom right by the Dutch buckets or all the way up at the top. So I gotta take these off and then I take off one leaf branch too. So this right here will come off. This is the last leaf branch that came off. Dad put this one, so then we'll do this one. And like I've said before, we just got to keep the airflow and we got to keep the tomatoes exposed so they can get ripe. So sometimes when these tomatoes start growing a little bit faster in the summer, we have to take off more than one of these to keep up with how fast they're going. But you don't want to take off more than three or 
else it stresses the plant too much. Okay, another good little harvest. Now for the fun part. Okay, I got clippers, and then I gotta grab some more clips. And some little hangers for the clusters. I try to do the next part as efficiently as possible or else I'd be up and down the ladder a million times. So what I do is follow the main stem up and I look for any suckers that need cut off. And usually the suckers grow in between this main stem and then the leaf branches. So here's a stump that dad had already cut off. It looks like he got all the way up there pretty good. So I know there'll be some at the top. Here's one up here. This is all a sucker right here. So that'll come off. And then I also will do the tomato clusters at this step too. I want to only have about four, so something like this, these little two would come off. And then I'll put the clip here. So when they get bigger, they can be supported. And then once I get to the top, I do the actual lean and lowering part. I'm gonna start up here at this front corner. And Dad's already leaned and lowered a couple times, so you can see the vine coming out of the Dutch bucket and then it's starting to wrap around this way. needs a hook. We'll do that. Just sucker we don't want. And then I like to put a vine clip on first before I lean and lower so that way it doesn't break on, on me. A little clip on there. And then these are really heavy. So I pick up the whole bobbin off of that main wire. And you, you got to be careful with the wire because it's woven and you don't want to do damage to the top. So you got to make sure you bring it away. And then I usually unwind it like twice and then make sure the vine's all right down at the bottom. Kind of let it hang down and then lean it over and clip it back on. that and then mom's big weekly harvest are probably the most labor intensive jobs in the greenhouse but it's not too bad except for when the sun starts coming out it gets hot but at least it's not raining
out here in the high tunnel, I'm gonna start taking some of my hanging baskets home. And I know mom's gonna start getting hers up to the house too. That way we get it all cleared out, ready for dad to install our dosatron system. And I was also gonna start seeding some gourds. That's one of the things that we can grow outside that the deer won't bother. And we thought it'd be something fun to bring to the market towards the end of the season. All right, we're just gonna do this nice and easy. We got a couple different kinds of assorted gourds, just the ornamental ones and some mini pumpkins and stuff like that. I have a reused 50 cell tray and I just put some plain old potting soil in here, got it wetted down and I'm just gonna stick some of these seeds in. Here's some of the onions we started, and they're getting really green, so hopefully that means they're happy. And then up here, the strawberries are really throwing out a lot of flowers now. I think there was a little strawberry somewhere. Oh yeah, there's a little green one. We got this whole area over here cleared out for the gourds. So we used to grow a few things over here. Um, we tried garlic once that turned out pretty well. And then we had this whole area planted up with strawberries, but they just got totally ruined by the raccoons. So we're hoping the gourds will do well here. And we used to use a plastic um, mulching thing that made the plastic rows to keep the weeds down. But even after picking it up, we still find these little pieces of plastic that come up. So mom and dad found this new stuff. It's actually biodegradable. So we're hoping that it'll work well with the gourds and we'll see how it does. Here's the biodegradable stuff they picked up. It just feels like thin plastic, so hopefully it'll work good. Not super filled in yet, but I think they'll be cute. And then the rest of them, there'll be a couple more on the front porch. Then I'm gonna put one over by the garage and then a couple on the barn over there. Peas are just starting to come up in the garden, but with all this rain, I don't think there's gonna be much I can do. It's just really wet in here. So I think I'm gonna work on putting the fence up around the perimeter, because I have digging dogs that like to come in here.
I've been using this thing for five or six years now and works pretty good. All I gotta do is just put it on the post and have it facing towards the sun. the ground. Oh, it's broken though. There, that might work. I need to clean it. I'm glad this is done because I noticed a little hole over there, another hole over there, and then a big dog hole over there by my potatoes. And both of my Australian Shepherds like to dig for some reason. I'll show you down here real quick. While we're waiting for the weather to warm up, I still got all my baby plants down here. And now that I've had my grow light, my new grow light going for a while, I feel like I can give you a pretty good review. So again, this is my HLG Horticulture Lighting Group light. And I have to say that it's doing a great job. None of my plants are getting leggy or stretching at all. And the zucchini are happy, the tomatoes are happy, and then I have my desktop NFT system underneath of it. So I'm, I mean, I would definitely recommend getting one of these if you're in the market for a grow light. Well, everybody, we're going to play for a little bit while we wait for Bobby and Blaine to get home from T-Ball. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be putting out another one soon. So thanks for watching.